What's up guys, thanks for hanging out. Today we're gonna go over seven key things that I believe every emerging pro needs to go through in order to start making money with their camera. Number one, you have to assess yourself. Do you have the time? Do you have the energy? Do you have the talent to be a professional photographer? Now, it's easy to see if you have talent. First of all, every time you've ever taken a picture, all your friends, all your family, all your relatives look at you and say, oh my God, you should be a photographer. If that's something that's happened to you before, okay, that's good. Now, next, do you value photography? Do you believe that there is a future in professional photography? Is that answer yes? Do you see photography everywhere and say to yourself, I wish it was me that was making these pictures. I wish I was a professional photographer. Yes, you're the right type of mindset to be a professional. And if you have the talent, let's get on to number two. Number two is specialize. Are you trying to show the world that you can do too many things? I have to tell you, the jack of all trades, master of none, philosophy to professional photography is not a fast route to being successful. Specialize, be the car photographer, the portrait photographer, the family photographer, the wedding photographer, the commercial, the editorial, the fashion photographer. If you're in a smaller market, you might not be able to shoot just one thing and make a living. If that's the case, what you need to get good at is categorizing. Categorizing the type of work that you do so people, if they want portraits, they're not looking at wedding photography mixed in with portraits, mixed in with babies, mixed in with cars, mixed in with landscapes. If you're in a smaller market, look at everyone that's calling themselves a photographer in your town. Are they as good? Are they better? Or are they specializing in an area that's different than the area that you want to specialize in? If that's the case, there's enough room for the both of you. Just do something different, better. Number three, assemble. When the work is there and the specialty is there, when the quality is there, it's time to assemble the work. Create categories for the work that you specialize in. Even if you provide general photography service in the small market that you're in, you have to provide examples of every one of those types of photography that you say that you can do. And also, those examples should be spectacular. Spectacular is the exception to every rule. You can make it in any market if you're exceptional. Care only about the great. Care only about the spectacular. If you're not sure what of your images are good, great, or spectacular, get some help. Get a consultant. Ask some friends. Ask somebody who has no idea about photography to just pick what photographs they think are the best. Most people can recognize spectacular. I can help you recognize spectacular. Assembling your work is the fastest way to see where you're at with your photography. The fastest way to see where you have amazing and where you need help. Now that you have this amazing body of work of spectacular images, it's time to present. Your website is the first place that people will look and discover your photography. Social media like Behance, Instagram, Twitter is where people can find your work, of course, but your goal with your social media presence is to try to take those people from your social media and get them to your website where you can have a call to action and actually get them hiring you. Your photography website is a full expression of you. You can control everything from navigation, design sense, how much or how little people see, and it's just you. When people are on your website, they're thinking about you only, so consider your website as a higher level of importance than your social media. 
If you have a good design sense, you should literally be able to put a website together in an afternoon. If you don't, I'm sure you have friends who can help. I'm sure you can go on Fiverr and find somebody who can help you. You should be hungry to share. You should be excited to put together this website because many photographers get stuck on this point, which is assembling the work, presenting the work. These are the points where if you haven't got past this and you're just dealing with social media and using social media only as the way that you're trying to get photography work, this is likely why it's not happening. You haven't gone through the assembly stage and you really haven't gone through the design sensibility and the energy it takes to create a website. And I do three photo shows a week. I'm always showing the absolute best photography websites that I find and I'm using them for inspiration for my own site and for my viewers. I'm using them for you to show you how simple, slick, and amazing your website could be. Adobe Portfolio integrates with Lightroom. It integrates with Behance. This kind of integration makes it easier for you to update, which means you update more often, and then that work directly goes into the right social media funnel. You get to have your work in front of the most creative people in the world that are actually making a living with their creativity and actually looking to hire photographers just like you. If you have a look at Behance, you'll see this is an Instagram. So it's why I'm continually pushing Behance, why I'm continually advising emerging photographers to have their work there. It's how you'll get discovered. It's how you'll go viral. Special bonus for making it this far. A physical print portfolio, if you can. Printing your photography, freeing your photographs off of a computer is genius, especially if you're trying to get work within the advertising space, within the print space, within the magazine space, where what your work looks like printed is kind of crucial. If that's the case, you need to consider making a print portfolio to be able to show people. This print portfolio shows what your work looks like in print and shows that you really understand tone, fabrics, skin, retouching. It shows what your work really looks like. If most of the work that you're going after is online e-commerce companies, if that's the case, show your best work and put it on an iPad Pro and allow the clients to have a look at it, navigate and pass it around. That's a great way and actually I think that's the best way to show your portfolio if you're dealing with web-based companies. Number five, your social presence. I have to tell you, as a creator and someone who's been doing this for as long as there's been social media and longer, when we're a solopreneur, we have to do this on our own. So we have to do research to see what social media platforms are working best for the type of photography that we do, but also don't be so hard on yourself and know that most of us can maintain our website plus two social media sites. So if you're trying to maintain six of them or four of them, maybe look at the analytics, see where the traffic's coming from and consider putting more effort into less social media platforms. That's my advice for you. Number six, promotional material. Print isn't dead if you use it correctly. I use a company called Moo and Moo makes my business cards, my postcards. The thing that's amazing is you're able to have a different image on the front with your same contact information on the back. You're able to do a job that's headshots or do a job that's corporate or do a job that's a car shoot and you have a business card with every one of those representations on there. It's basically like your portfolio in a box. Secret time, if you give that box to the client and let that client look through all of them and choose the one that they want, your client will keep the business card. They're picking their favorite photograph of yours and it has the contact information on the back. Those potential clients keep that card on a mood board. Mood board? They keep it in their file and when they're looking through the card, like everybody else's card, I guarantee you that mood card stands out. I also have this thing called Tappy. 
Tappy is this little dot that I have on the back of my phone. All I need to do is just tap my phone to another phone and it beams my contact information to them. My contact card so they can save me into their phone. Of course, my website, of course, my social media, so they can just open my social media follow. Between Moo and Tappy, it's a genius way to share your contact information when you're in person. The printed postcard and a handwritten note to somebody that you're trying to get next to. Imagine you get a personal note from someone. Hey Steve, it was really nice meeting you the other day. I'd really love to grab a coffee. If you get a note like that and then turn it over and it's an incredibly memorable, exceptional photograph, people hire people that they feel like they know. Anytime that we have opportunities to create conversations with strangers, we have to do that. And when it comes to self-promotion, a personal note to somebody, a business card that starts a conversation and or technology that makes people say, oh my God, that's so cool. How'd you do that? You may never have success with email reach outs to potential clients, but you might. Email communication is relatively dry, so if you can bring a little bit of humor, if you can bring a little bit of light, if you can bring a little bit of a smile to your potential next client, it's gonna help. Three to five spectacular images and three lines, preferably funny. I'm editing, by the way, so much stuff out of this video because I can't make this video two hours, which it should be, but attention span like TikTok means that I have to deliver you the goods in a acceptable time frame, but with takeaways every 35 seconds. So I'm doing my best. Lastly, don't be embarrassed about talking about your photography. It's not self-promotion, it's called marketing. And if someone's interested in photography, if they show interest, people don't show interest in your photography, then Stop talking about it. Do it in a way that doesn't sound egotistical or like you're boasting. Be proud, be passionate about your photography and it'll rub off. Be very ready if you're going to be receiving phone calls, how much you charge for this, this, and this, or how you can do a quote really quickly. Have some stuff rehearsed. I gotta tell you, it's going to be definitely, definitely helpful. If you've watched this video today, oh my God. Do you see what's happening out here? I'm tired of talking right now, so I'm gonna stop. But you should probably watch this video next, which is five tips that you could be doing literally right now for marketing your photography business. Go watch that one right now. Thanks for watching.